For the better part of a year, I've been converting this 1989 MTD Ranch King tractor into electric. And while it's not completely done, I at least wanted to put together a video now to describe the process I went through converting this, some of the things I learned, some of the things that I would do differently the next time, and some of the things that are yet to come. So uh, please join me and hope you enjoy this video.
Let's look at the technology stack that makes the electric cut work. Powering the electric cut are two golden motor, three kilowatt DC brushless liquid cooled motors. Attached to each motor is a Kelly KLSN 72 volt brushless motor controller. The whole unit is powered by 16 lithium iron phosphate batteries at 100 amp hours each, connected to an overkill solar 100 amp BMS. That gives us 5.2 kilowatt hour of battery capacity at 52 volts. Everything then is attached to a Raspberry Pi 4 that I use for data collection through MariahDB and Grafana, which is being used as the dashboarding system. I originally ordered two air-cooled motors for the tractor. However, supply chain issues, what they are, I ended up substituting for liquid-cooled motors. Because of this, I had to come up with a way to cool the liquid that's flowing through the motors and a way to pump it. I came up with this interesting design using a small radiator, two case fans, and a surge tank from a computer um, water cooling type system. It actually fit really well behind the seat of the tractor and provides adequate cooling to both motors under full load. Now I'm a person of creature comfort, so one thing I added was this wireless charge dock for my phone. Basically, I just use my phone to listen to music while I'm on the tractor, but why not have it charged while I'm at it? So a look at the main electronics for the electric cut. On the right here is a manual disconnect. This is actually good for 400 amps. From there, it moves on to a 48 volt contactor. This is what you hear click when you turn the ignition switch. And then all of that is routed then into a distribution block for the, the high current devices, such as the two motor controllers. On the negative side, the battery pack goes into a 200 amp circuit breaker and that goes into the BMS. The BMS actually works on the negative side of the battery. And then from there, the negative side goes into the high current negative distribution block. From there, we have the terminal strip in the center, which is really just because this is an experiment. And you know, if this was maybe a more productionized environment, I would have plugs or something, but I, I wanted something where I could go through and test and adjust. And you know, I, it was new, I didn't know what I was doing. And then we have the two speed controllers. Uh, one is for the deck motor, and the other one is for the drive motor. And then the, the wires in the center, well, those are things that I still need to hook up. Part of it is power coming from the 12 volt distribution block that I have mounted underneath the seat uh, for the headlights. There's a temperature sensor for the, the water cooling system. There's a bunch of small sensors and such that I still need to hook up into the system. Additionally, one thing that I do not have connected yet and haven't really been able to show is I put a linear actuator to adjust the deck height. And, and part of this was just because it was neat to do. The other part of it was is because I was changing the, the drive mechanism to have a throttle, uh, the, the lever that controlled the deck up and down was actually in the way of my leg. So it made more sense to make this electronic. So, so far I've only had one actual problem with the tractor, and that was I ruined the bearings inside the motor that runs the cutting deck. I was going through some, some leaves that had some sand in it and it kicked up a pretty big dust cloud, and that's when I realized that these bearings are not sealed, and the, the sand just chewed everything up. Uh, thankfully I was able to find some sealed bearings um, relatively easily on Amazon and put them back in and got everything back and going within a couple of days. So what's left to do? Really three main things. The first is I need to finish wiring all the bits that haven't been completed yet, like the headlights, the deck lift motor, things like that. I also want to improve the data collection and the dashboards, and that'll kind of grow over time anyway. Uh, but most of all, I want to see how the mower performs during the fall leaf cleanup. That's going to be the big test to see uh, how, how well the batteries perform. And right now I get about uh, 25 to 30 percent of battery usage per cut. I expect that to increase with the load from the leaves, but hopefully still less than 50 percent. So that's it for this video. I'm sure I'll do a follow-up at some point, but a big shout out to my dad for all the engineering advice, welding, plasma cutting, and this is a picture of what the tractor looked like uh, about 10 years ago when I decided to take it apart into a bunch of little pieces and then just kind of handed it off to him to rebuild. And that's why the tractor looks as nice as it does as he went through and cleaned everything, repainted everything, and put it all back together. 
only for a few years later to have me tear it apart again and convert it to electric. But uh, as you see, it's, it's still in one piece now. So until next time, thanks for watching.